Hey everybody, Todd here, and I hope you're having a great day as always. Today I want to talk about one of the biggest mistakes I see with EQ, and it happens when you're using more than one microphone on a source. So let's talk about it. Now don't get me wrong, EQ can be a great way to tailor the sound to dial it in for exactly what you want. The issue you have to be aware of is phase. Whenever you apply EQ to a track, you're going to adjust the phase of that recording. Now there's a few exceptions to this, there's some ways to get around it, we'll talk about those later in the video, but by and large you need to remember that when you apply phase, you're going to adjust the relationship of one track or recording to the other one. And it can be even more problematic when we have more than one microphone on the same source. And so that's what we're going to take a look at today. Fortunately I've got a couple of solutions for you, so let's get to it. Now to demonstrate what I'm talking about, we're going to use a snare drum mic top and bottom. So a really common application where we're going to use two mics to record the same instrument. And I'll let you hear the recording first, and then we'll take a look at the issue. Okay, and so fairly typical of what you might expect. Now, many times you're going to want to go ahead and EQ one of these microphones or maybe both of them because you're trying to change the sound, get the snare to sit better in the mix. So I've gone ahead and thrown an EQ here on the snare top. In this case, I'm going to apply just a very gentle high pass filter. And this is kind of what you want to do. You don't want to make big moves here, just some gentle EQ without, uh, without creating any drastic changes if you've done your recording properly. And that's the whole key. If you get your recording right, you don't have to make these drastic changes. So this is a very, very mild high pass filter that we're going to apply here. And I want you to see the effect it has. So first of all, I'll just solo this out and we'll play it with and without. Okay, and just a very subtle effect because the snare drum in this case sounds about what I'd like it to. Now I'll show you what happens. When we go ahead, I'm going to render this out with this EQ and I'd like you to keep an eye on the waveform here. And now you see when I did that, the phase shifted. And the problem is the phase shifted at only the snare top and not the bottom. So now we're going to have an issue with both of them. I'll go ahead and revert back so you can see the difference. And again, just keep an eye on that, on that waveform. And one last time. And so that's not something we want to have. And even though I had a very gentle high pass filter, you could see it made this difference. Imagine if I had a big move made with the EQ, what it would have done to the phase. So we have two solutions to this. The first one is, instead of using a regular EQ, is to go with a linear phase EQ. So if you have to EQ, one or the other, we want to do it without changing the phase. Now you have to be careful with pre-ring here, that can happen, but again, if you're not making big moves, linear phase should be all right. So now I've thrown a linear phase equalizer on the snare top mic, and I've tried to make the curve as even as possible. This is a graphic EQ, it's a little different than the other, but I'm not so worried about the EQ curve being identical. It's more important that the phase remains the same. So I'll let you hear it with and without again. You see with the EQ, it just takes a little bit of that low end, which emphasizes a little more in the high frequencies. I haven't boosted them, but of course EQ is relative. You make the low frequencies softer, the higher frequencies appear louder. You make the high frequencies louder, the lower frequencies appear softer. And so it's a balance. I'm going to go ahead and render this out. And so looking at the waveforms, what we're looking for is a difference in phase here. There can be a slight difference in the perceived loudness, but let's, let's, let's look at the, uh, look for phase. And you can see as I switch back and forth, the phase has remained the same. Again, we're getting a little bit of a change in terms of the relative low frequencies to high, but the phase again is the important thing here. And so that's one way to deal with this. If we need to EQ, and we can of course do this on both, this example, I'm just going to do it on the snare top, but you get the idea. So I'm going to show you my preferred method, especially if you have to make any bigger moves on a snare or again, any source that has two or more microphones on it. And so in this case, I'm going to create a bus and I'll use an EQ on the bus. Again, if you need to EQ each microphone separately, 
that's okay. You just need to be careful with the phase. That's where a linear phase EQ is going to help out. Watch out for pre-ring, but if you're not making big moves, you shouldn't have too many problems there. So to create a bus, it's a little different in every DAW. In Studio One here, I'm going to add a bus channel, and then I'll go ahead to the snare bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and add that to the same bus. And so now I have both of these, the top and bottom on the snare, going to a bus channel. Then I can simply go ahead and do an insert here and throw in an EQ that I want. And again, it can be a parametric EQ. It can be sort of any kind of any kind of thing that we want to do here. And I can go ahead and listen again with and without this. Now I use the snare drum top and bottom for this video because that's a really common situation where you find yourself with two mics on one source. But it's certainly not limited to that. Guitar amp cabinets all the time, acoustic guitar, other acoustic instruments, you're gonna use a dual mic technique a lot. And I'm sure you found this in the past where it just didn't sound quite right after you EQ'd both of the sources. Now keep these tips in mind, they don't solve everything, but a lot of times when you finish working on a mix and you listen back, and it just doesn't sound quite right, phase is a good thing to check. A matter of fact, it's one of the first things that you should check. And if you're looking for other ways to level up the quality of your mix, check out one of the videos on the screen. As always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate having you here with me today. Take care and I'll see you next time.